Let's talk about uh, former da Prime Minister David Cameron. He's accused some Muslim groups who criticised the prevent counter-terrorism strategy of enabling terrorism as he's backed an overhaul of the government's uh, strategy. Once again, we've had in terms of like, Sir David Amos, uh, the Tory MP who was uh, stabbed to death, uh, someone who was known to the authorities and who'd been referred to the prevent strategy and clearly it did not prevent that horrific murder. Let's talk to Dr Paul Stott. He's head of security and extremism at the unit at the Policy Exchange Think Tank. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, uh, Paul. Um, um, what do you think that uh, David Cameron means when he talks about uh, how these people who are criticising this uh, uh, this strategy as enabling terrorism? Well, I think David Cameron's obviously speaking from from experience as a former uh, prime minister and, uh, and as uh, an observer of these matters. What we found in our research, and um, I think David had, had noticed this as well in his uh, in his time in office is a very concerted campaign against the prevent policy from a series of uh, Islamist organizations from certain Muslim representative groups, although how representative they are is a, a, a moot matter. But for, for them, opposition to prevent is a sort of dying a ditch issue. This is one of their main campaigns. It's what they focus on all the time. And, and, and why, time, why is that? Is it this idea that, that this strategy is sort of in itself, a lot of people saying it's Islamophobic, that it's racist, targeting uh, it, uh, Muslims. Um, but again, we also know it, it's there to target you know, far right terrorism as well. Yes, what Prevent is concerned about is extremism and trying to deter people from being terrorists. And we have a problem in this country with, with far-right uh, terrorism, cases like the murder of, of Joe Cox being uh, well known. But we have a much greater problem with Islamist extremism and jihadist terrorism. So, in a way, that's where the bulk of Prevent's focus should be. One of the interesting things with the review coming up that David Cameron's mentioned by uh, William Shawcross is that, uh, that there's this issue of whether or not prevent really needs to be sort of refactored a, a, a little bit because um, it seems to be focusing more now on people from far right backgrounds yeah. than from where, Islamist where backgrounds. They are quite clearly a much smaller threat. I'm not saying there isn't a threat there, but in terms of the numbers of people who are who face being killed, the reality is there is a much bigger threat in Islamist extremist terrorism. Now, your your think tank uh, has called for mend. Cage, the Muslim Council of Britain, who often quoted in national media, and the Federation of Student Islamic Societies, um, uh, to to basically to stop being funded by the government. A lot of these organisations they lobby the government, but they're also funded by our taxes. Some of those organisations are funded by uh, government at times, or have been in the past. What's more common is a sort of degree of patronage, where, for example, with the National Health Service, you'll get uh, men's logo uh, yeah. appearing on events. The same with the Muslim Council of Britain. But the National Health Service has a statutory duty to uphold prevent. Yeah. So one moment it's platforming these organisations, the next, um, you know, you've uh, got these organisations campaigning against prevent, yeah. saying prevent is racist, Islamophobic, that it's putting us on the road to China, uh, all of those uh, types of things. And those organisations, to an extent, have a greater degree of credibility than they should okay. because the government's engaging with them. I uh, really appreciate you joining us, uh, Dr Paul Starter from the Policy Exchange Think Tank. Thank you very much for that.